Now that we are able to navigate the CLI with some degree and have done some initial configuration, we will now look at the simplest way the switch can facilitate network communication. To do this, we will add two further hosts to the network. It would be possible to load the previous save task and add the two computers, but for practice sake and to ensure that the labeling of the devices is the same within your Cisco packet tracer and that of this task, we shall start anew. The first thing we need to do is add a host. So we click on End Devices, Genetic Host, and drag that onto our workspace. Next, for the 2960 switch, we select Network Devices, Switches, 2960 switch, and drag that onto our workspace. To connect them together, we select Connections, then Rollover Cable. To connect the devices together, we click on Host, and select the serial or RS232 port. This is then connected to the console port of the switch. Now to add two further hosts. End devices, then drag two hosts onto the workspace. In reality, these two hosts will need connecting to the switch. So once again, we select connections. And this time, we shall use the copper straight through cable. This will be connected to the Ethernet 01 of the switch and to the Ethernet 0 of the first host. Shortly after connecting the cable, you will notice that the switch end of the cable is accompanied by an orange dot, as shown here. After a short time, this will turn green. In our example, we have speeded it up. This is the packet tracer's way of indicating that the port is starting up. By default, the ports are switched off until they are needed. This mimics the line status light of a physical switch. Now to repeat this for the other host. Copper straight through cable to the fast Ethernet 02 of the switch to the fast Ethernet of PC2. Before we carry on, we should wait until the orange light turns to green to indicate connect. Now let's check on the terminal through PC0. So we click on PC0, Desktop, then Terminal. Notice here that you will see several messages that have appeared to indicate that some of the ports on the switch have changed their status. We shall minimise the terminal rather than closing it as we shall monitor the activity of the switch during the rest of this task. Now to assign some IP addresses to our hosts. So we click on PC1, Config tab, then on Ethernet 0 Adapter. Here we can enter our IP address for this host, 10.0.0.1 and a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. We shall close this and repeat it for PC2. Config tab, then fast Ethernet 0 adapter, and this time we shall enter the IP address of 10.0.0.2 with a subnet mask of also 255.0.0.0. Now we have the workings of a small network between PC1 and PC2. We can prove the connectivity between these hosts running the ping command. Clicking on desktop, command prompts, then first using the IP command that will check that the IP addresses have been correctly assigned. Then ping 10.0.0.1 to check successful connectivity. And as we can see, it is. Let's close this and check connectivity from PC1 to PC2. So we'll click on PC1, Desktop tab, Command Prompt. Check that the IP address has been successfully assigned using the IP config. Then for connectivity using ping 10.0.0.2. And as we can see, it has been established once again. 
Although our network is very small and basic, we now have a lab from which we can test some of the functions of the switch and see exactly the effect they will have. Close this window and return to the PC0 and let's see what, if anything, has changed. To view the interface data, we need to be in the enable mode, so we use the command enable. And to view the interface data, we use the show interfaces command. You will be given a long list with information about various interfaces. Notice the fast Ethernet 0, 1 is up. If we press the space key, we should also notice that the fast Ethernet 0, 2 is up too. If we press the space key once again, we should find that the next Ethernet port is down or disabled. And so is the next one. In fact, if we were to check all the rest of the fast Ethernet ports, they too will be down or disabled. This detail confirms our connections. We may have already realised how this can facilitate fault finding in a network. Here we shall abort the listing using any key and return to the enable prompt. It is possible to query just one single port without listing all of them. To do this, we use the command show interfaces fast ethernet 01. Once again, we have the condition of this port. We can also manually enable or disable interfaces in the config mode. First, abort the existing listing. Then use the command config to enter the configuration mode, then enter again for the terminal. To select the Ethernet adapter we wish to configure, we select it using the command interface fast Ethernet 01. Notice again the prompt has changed to indicate the changes we make will only apply to this interface we have specified. Using the help command, it will list all the commands we can use to configure this port. To disable this port, we can use the shutdown command. So we type in shutdown. You will receive confirmation that this port has been shut down. Let's check back at the Cisco packet tracer, minimising the PC0 terminal window. We shall find that the copper straight through cable now has two red dots at each end indicating that there is no longer communication with the switch. We can confirm this has taken effect by clicking on the PC1 host command prompt, then in using the up directional key that we will repeat our last command, then press enter. As expected, communication has failed. Once again, a useful feature in fault finding or for isolating hosts in a network. To enable this adapter, we shall first close this window, then return to the terminal in PC0, and use the command no shutdown. Then return to our workspace and wait until the two green dots have returned and the ports have been re-enabled. The no section of the command told the system to do the opposite of the main command. Let's check the connectivity from PC1 to PC2 once again. Click on PC1, followed by the command prompt. Once again use the up directional key and check that successful connection has been re-established. We can also abbreviate the names of the network interfaces rather than having to type fast ethernet 01. We can simply use FA01. We can see this in our next example. Return to the terminal. In a large network with many hundreds of switches and hosts, it can be useful to give a description to the interface connections as it could be problematic to trace a connection, certainly if we are using the genetic terms such as ethernet or host etc. To add a description, we simply use the command description connected to PC2. We can see this effect if we exit to leave the command mode, then exit again to return to the enable mode. Now, if we type the command show interface FA01, this should show 
the description has been added. Before finishing, we shall save the running in config file using the following command. Then return to the Cisco Packet Tracer and save as tax03.